Um, I think the idea is to provide and to create a space where you can provide, where you can put those resources, those um, uh, yeah, extra resources basically to support what you've done in your workshop. So if you want to make any resources available, this is what we were using, using WebLearn for, so it's exactly the same thing, but just give it a bit more structure, I guess. Yeah? Um, so workshops, as an example, um, I've started putting in, I haven't done my workshops yet, they're January and February, but just to start with, Charles suggested using learning modules as a way to present content. So for example, mine is about using web learning in more uh, exciting, student-friendly ways, then I've just created a learning module to complement what I'm going to do in the workshop. And obviously, because I haven't quite finalised that, this is all very basic stuff at the moment. Yeah, I think that's important if we reflect the other. And also here, we're also linking a course to what's in the e matrix. So we're not going to just replicate what's in the e matrix and then stick it all in WebLearn, because that would be pointless, obviously. But we can complement what goes in each, and that's a huge conversation that still needs to be had. But in here, I see this linking out a lot to e matrix content. And that's not just what's related to WebLearn necessarily. Because if you're doing a workshop on multimedia or on social media or something like this, then you'll be linking out to some of the great content that's on the e-matrix. Mm -hmm. So it's really a sort of triumvirate of resources which all complement each other. Um, and I think one of the things I wanted to do, I don't know if we've got much time, but just talk about with you what you think this should include. I'm showing you the basic structure and this is really a beginning. But I think it's a conversation perhaps we should, all should have about what, what we should include, what, what we can realistically put in there. Because um, I'm not going to do everything and put it all in there. So it'd be nice to have, you know, what do you want to do? How do you see it complementing your workshops, your demos, and, and anything else? Um, so I think that might be a sort of good place to, to start, if you like. And remember, though, it is really work in progress. It's just started. I've done one sort of day on this. It's, it's just beginning. Um, but yeah, think back to what we did with using WebLearn, and it's very much, that's the idea. Um, but it would be successful if you, you know, we as a team all use it together, and if we think about those links with the other sources, with the other two um, you know, hubs of information. Can I say something even though I don't do any workshops? Uh, yeah, of course. I think um, something that might be useful. it naturally segments, then you might consider doing a, a separate entry on the matrix for each of the segments. But then in, in WebLearn, you would be giving much more of an actual uh, scheduled itinerary, if you want a better way of putting it. So, you know, come to the workshop at 2 o'clock, we'll be doing this, about 2.45, we'll start doing this, and then you'll link each of those thises to separate entries in the matrix. And each of those entries can be consumed as a separate standalone item, but then same time, if you're distinct through web learning because you're actually part of the workshop, then you see them as a whole yeah, and yeah. how they connect. That's um, that wouldn't be suitable for all workshops, but it's mm -hmm. a way of thinking about it. So you're sort of saying that we can use, which I think is what we're, I think that's a good idea, I think that's valid, but we're trying to use this as a kind of scaffolding yes. the information that well, is there on the event, event, and yeah. it's the reason why you're in web learning. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just duplicating, yeah. because it's but it is, uh, it's added sort of value, framing, so. and it's also helping punters. I mean, it's marketing the matrix mm -hmm. content as much yeah. as anything else, but at the same time, it's showing a reason for why you would use the matrix, even if you're a teacher in something else. You might be using that content in a teaching environment and put it into yeah. work in exactly. that way. Yeah. Also, I think, yeah, and the other point there, which you're touching on, is using this as a way to demonstrate how WebLearn can be used. Yeah. So it's not, we talked about this before, that perhaps in the workshops we'll have this structure where, all right, you have um, what Shah calls a wrapper, which is this sort of item, and then you click into that and you, you get to a learning module, for example. 
And so every workshop could be structured in a similar way to give some kind of consistency for people using that yeah. information. But if we want to present um, demos, we might think about, well, actually, what's another way we can use WebLearn? How, how might you maybe just use content areas and folders? Or how do we want to present it? So we're showing alternative ways to present content. Um, because staff don't always have that available to them. And as you know, when you see learning modules with 80 pages, you think, oh, uh, is that the best way to do it? How to use the menu, that sort of thing. So, so it has these sort of multiple uh, roles and purposes, I think. And that's, that's the idea of what we're trying to do with it, I think. Yeah, no, exactly. And it, it just occurred to me that, you know, what, what we try to do here is model best practice in different ways on WebLearn, because there are many different ways to do things, as you've pointed out. I was just thinking, Jim, um, with the, um, the demos there, um, you could you could use a hyperlink into instead of a wrapper approach you could just hyperlink it yeah. you know that sort yeah, of thing just to give them different ways of yeah. navigating and in, into the content and the content is what you'll produce each of you will produce or has produced because there's wax of stuff that we can just mine out of existing um, you know existing assets and, and materials that you have you know stuff that's hidden away that could be dusted off and made excitingly obvious to everyone. Yeah. I think the other thing, I mean, with the images, what we're trying to do is just to um, make it consistent with the cell e-services site, so just using the same images. So you have, when you see um, webinars in Charles' cell e-services site, you'll see the same image in the module. So it's trying to keep a bit of consistency and a bit of yeah. minimal sort of branding. So that's the idea as well. Um, also with the matrix, I mean I'm quite keen to try and use some of the colours, like the sort of the um, cyan, you know, the sort of greeny, mm -hmm. that sort of colour, I think we could use that in here to sort of link to the yeah, matrix, yeah. until you improve I mean, that or whatever. But yeah, I mean, thinking of them as one sort of collective group of sites that, yeah. that fits together, and how they fit together is... Yeah, I think the users thing. do like that, you know, I mean, it yeah. sounds, um, I mean, it's not something you should spend all your life doing, but at the same time, I think... That kind of, yeah, you're in the same place, somewhere different but the same. Yeah. People like that. They find that quite reassuring. It, it, it's actually essential because, um, you know, the studies they've done to, to provide um, um, navigation anchors, navigational anchors, because it is, it is cognitively, um, you know, the, the, the cognitive, the thinking landscape is, has no... None of the usual signposts that we associate with things when we learn, like chapter headings or the fact that it's a book and that's a, you know, a board or whatever it is. So if, if we're 